they have done it in the past and they are capable of doing it again. Chinese belligerence along the line of actual control is a well-known fact. They have managed to make incursions into the Indian territory, sparking off bilateral tensions. But the Chinese army's capability to carry out such exercises is highly aided by the well-developed infrastructure on this side of the border. The road, rail and communication links are both up to date and up to speed on the other side. But India seems to be far behind in development of this crucial region. Vyond's Karthike Sharma tells us more after a visit to the region. Take a look. This is the effective military border between India and China. what is known as the line of actual control. But the difference between the two sides of the border is both stark and chilling. Vion's recent visit to the India-China border is telling proof of the contrast. While Beijing has built civilian infrastructure right up to the border and also mobilized local communities into organized units, the Indian side lags far behind. The road to Kibithu and border areas are in poor condition, with one narrow road serving as the main artery. It is dotted with small bridges which cannot handle heavy artillery like Bofors. These roads regularly cave in. Experts blame the weather on our side. The Indian military is dependent on suspension bridges to transport material. Some of these links lead to nowhere as there is no road connectivity on the other side. In the first go you'll be surprised as to where does this bridge go because uh, it ends uh, nowhere in the sense that uh, it ends at a sheer uh, massive rock cliff but as of now it's also a story of arrested development. It's also a story of what needs to be done here because it tells us how remote this area is. We are looking after 570 kilometer of this treacherous train of Arunachal Pradesh where in 2018 also it lacks communication network and by looking after we mean we are planning for new bridges, for new roads, constructing them and above all maintaining the infrastructure which is already there. And it's not just the Chinese road connectivity along the border. Beijing has managed to construct a railway station merely 25 kilometers away from LAC. But the nearest railway station on the Indian side is as far as 200 kilometers away. It takes an Indian soldier almost 80 hours of travel from the border to the station. Though some bridges like Hupe and Hazarika Bridge have been built across the mighty Brahmaputra, which have the durability for the flying of tanks, but such bridges are few and far between. Even supplies to the higher Himalayas are dependent on mules, as the tracks on the upper reaches have not been built so far. The bridges came very, very late when it comes to our natural Pradesh for simple reason, because the priority of the Indian Army was different. The priority was to connect the passes and not to connect inter valleys. And for this very reason, bridges like Bhupen Hazarikon, which I stand, which is nine kilometer long, was built so late in the day. And uh, what this bridge does is primarily is to cut short the movement time of the Indian Army. Early 90s, the first bridge was, uh, was constructed in this area. Before that, there were only makeshift arrangements. So yes, bridges help you cross valleys, rivers. It's the same case with data and voice connectivity. These men sitting on the roadside are repairing an optical fiber cable. Take a hard look at the reality. This is the sole link between the crucial army bases of Kibitu and Hailong. They are dependent on this small wire to transfer all their important data. The wire that is so vulnerable to sabotage and nature's fury. Here's another reality check. Private mobile phone towers disappear 150 kilometers from the border and state-run towers are as far as 50 kilometers away. 
Along the LAC, only Chinese mobile phone services are available. That's nothing short of a disaster for Intel operations. Needless to say that more needs to be done if India wants to be a match to China. And unfortunately, the situation along the Indian side of the line of actual control has been the same over the years. Not much has changed between the time when Vion's editor-in-chief visited the region two years ago and our latest visit to the sensitive region. With the past governments having ignored the importance of infrastructural development along the border, the region has suffered as a whole. 2018 is not 1962. Indian Army is far more prepared, better deployed, every part of the LSC is better covered. That the scenario in terms of meeting the challenge has completely changed and Indian Army is well within its means to not only challenge but also give a befitting reply if any incursion takes place.